Vera Holdings is looking to develop a global portfolio of emerging football clubs. And the company just went public here at the NASDAQ. And with me today to talk about the company, several executives. I've got uh, the CEO, Sergio Scalpelli, uh, with me. And um, Sergio, let's just start with you. You've completed the IPO and the listing. <laughs> so uh, you're here ringing the bell today. What's next for Vera Holdings? Oh, what next? First of all, uh, let me say uh, it was, it has been a, fantastic experience the experience of listing because uh, from several times we are searching we are we were we were searching resources to develop our project our football soccer project in in the USA you say soccer and uh, now in the next future we will develop in many many european countries so, so named lateral countries for the developing of uh, football of soccer uh, our project we we are project for uh, Macedonia, we are project for Gibraltar, we are project for uh, San Marino, we are project for Andorra. We will build with our brand, the Brera, Brera Holding and Brera Calcio, uh, uh, we will build new new uh, teams or uh, acquiring uh, old teams, uh, teams and then bring them to an acceptable level of professional football. It's not, of course, the same, the same football, the same soccer like uh, in uh, UK or in, it in Italy or in Spain, but can be very interesting because of the, uh, the, 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 the entrance in the, in the European competition. It's a real um, ambitious project. And uh, with this resource, we, we will, uh, I think we will, uh, we will do it. We will uh, reach it. What parts of the world do you see the most growth? The most growth, mm -hmm. the most growth, I think, is in two in two areas. The first area is to 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 have this kind, of, this high level of football in these lateral countries uh, to to participate, to have the possibility to participate to the European competition. And the, uh, through the European competition, have a good uh, a good system of revenues and so of maintenance and revenues for for the clubs and also also for the for the holding. And the second the second uh, prospect the, the second perspective is uh, to develop uh, a market transfer of young young uh, footballers football players and this is very important because uh, the second line of our development will be uh, in the in asia in africa and uh, in also in south america particularly in africa where are uh, uh, the soccer is in a kind of explosion of success, and uh, we will. We are confident that there in in Africa we can find real interesting uh, teams and also real inter real interesting uh, soccer soccer schools for 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 young talents. And with this this young talent, uh, it will come the transfer market, and this is also a line of uh, revenues. Alessandro, what is the strategy for developing a global portfolio of football clubs? <laughs> Uh, our strategy is uh, innovative strategies because uh, uh, we are a club that is based on a town that is Milano, uh, that is a real capital of uh, soccer, uh, uh, international football. And in Milano exist uh, two big uh, historical club, Inter and Milan, uh, that, is, uh, that has the capitalization more than $1 billion. Uh, we are known... Uh, from everybody like, like a third team, uh, but uh, it's really impossible to be competitive uh, in uh, that level in Italy. So we decide to develop one uh, system of acquisition, acquisition uh, of a uh, club in first division in small country. So diciamo, we will be, we will rest uh, the one uh, uh, Italian club based on Milan, everybody knows us like their team, but uh, our teams play outside, outside and uh, they will be uh, connected with this system of uh, uh, top level uh, teams through the uh, international competition. Most of all uh, in Europe, where every country, uh, even the smallest, uh, has the, the same uh, um, opportunity to go to the international uh, competition like Champions League, uh, like Europa League. Uh, that is a competition with very strong prizes uh, uh, 
monetary prices. And we try so to enter it at that, the top level through not Italy pyramid, food, uh, soccer pyramid, but uh, through uh, different uh, uh, country where uh, the possibility to uh, arrive to our goal is uh, easier. Leonardo, what do you and look way too tall for this camera? So. Okay, no, you look okay. what, what? Oh, I see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You look okay. okay. What What do you look for when acquiring a club? See, I think the key word here is sustainability. We want to find uh, places where we put our money that are beneficial for all parties involved. We need to make sure that the uh, money we spend is uh, as as a return that can be more money or can be uh, are the intangible values, and it, it is something <clears throat> that is also very productive for the local community we uh, intervene on. Uh, so, you see, most uh, um, the most uh, known football markets uh, globally, they actually have uh, not the best conditions because they have higher entering levels and everything. We try, this is not quite a strategy, we try to look for the loopholes in the football systems. We try to find the small places to, to get in and to and to get to the same financial results. Well, not the same, but with the, comparatively the same financial results as is as it, uh, uh, considered our proportions. Um, so we look for small counters in Europe, we look for uh, interesting developing markets uh, outside of Europe. Uh, I think this is the, the the sustainability here is the the, the key uh, to, to what we're uh, finding the, the, our next target. What does this mean for um, the league in terms of of tournaments and sponsorships exposure? So the concept of social impact soccer that we pioneered is huge for sponsorships, corporate Italy, and we think corporate globally has embraced this model. It's about ESG, it's about equality, it's about taking this Made in Italy brand and exporting it throughout the world, but starting in Europe. So the corporate sponsors that wanna get behind the Brera brand are lining up already. And we think there's great opportunity, not just within Italy, but in the other countries that we've already targeted to take the Brera brand to the market. And let's talk a little bit about the IPO and the proceeds of that and how you plan to use that to expand. We've been, very, we've been very prescribed about the proceeds from the IPO. We're gonna use it for acquisitions. As you've heard from the other Brer executives, we're targeting markets within Europe that are sometimes overlooked. Countries like Gibraltar, Andorra, San Marino, Liechtenstein, uh, Macedonia of all places. So we're gonna look for clubs that are in those markets where for less than a million euro, they can be acquired, capitalized, and at least at break even if not profit. We're then going to look at some emerging markets such as Africa, where player development is key and creating a farm system to feed those players into the mainstream European markets would be our goal. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome.